Hello, and welcome once again to God's One Chosen Channel. Um, I'm grateful to be here, and I'm glad that you actually came back to see another video. This video uh, will kind of tie into the Obama deception theory that uh, a lot of people seem to be just running with right now. Like, I'm wondering, man, how did this guy deceive anybody? What did he do to deceive you? He ran for president, and he won. What did he do that was deceptive? Um, I just see, I hear a lot of allegations going around, and I hear a lot of things. And when per people like myself uh, defend the president or try to support the president, I'm accused of reverse racism. Wow. Let me explain something. There is no such thing as reverse racism. Now, let me explain that, and I'll try to keep it at a tone level so I won't appear angry. But this is a very, very passionate thing for me. Um, it is amazing that the term reverse racism has uh, reared its ugly head in, in this country. This country, with the history that it has, it has the audacity to call ethnic races uh, races. How is that possible? Now, let's just go back and let's do a brief history. First of all, uh, there, there is a theory out there that blacks sold blacks into slavery. When if you actually do your history, you'll see that, yes, the tribal king did go over to King George and ask him would he help him. Would he help him to defeat the savages, I believe, uh, they were, they were going through, they were taking over tribes, and he was exiled, and he wanted his kingdom back, but he couldn't beat the savages, so he needed help, and he went over to King George, and King George actually refused. King George actually refused to make an alliance with him and to go against the savages in Africa. Now, what they did is they sent the, the tribal king off, and they found a few men who were courageous and just really adventurous, actually. I, I commend them all because I can't see how they found the courage to go into an, uh, a land that they knew nothing about and uh, try to uh, converse with a people that they knew nothing about. So I do give them credit for being courageous. But you have to understand they were courageous, yet they were deceptive. They went over with uh, under the guise, actually, of being missionaries. and uh, the, uh, They went over with the Bible, and they went over to try to uh, convince the, the rulers of that land that they were there to open a um, port for trade. And they stayed there for a matter of years, and the, actually the tribal kings got to trust them. And actually, uh, the Arabs are not in, innocent in this because they were actually the ones who financed the slave trade. But let's not get this twisted in saying that blacks sold blacks into slavery. That's idiotic. That never happened. This is something that racist white people put into place to confuse what they actually did. And what they actually did is they put people, free people, they captured them, they put them on a boat, they brought them 6,000, over 6,000 miles away from their home, and they chained them. And they took away their name, they took away their religion, they took away their heritage. They actually gave the slave their last name. What I'm saying is uh, when they bought the slave, Whatever their last name was, like my last name is Anderson, so if I go through history and I go back, we'll find out that the slave master that owned my ancestor's last name was Anderson. Now, when you find a people generations later who have formed a shell to whereas we really don't trust white people, that doesn't say that all white people are bad because we know that a lot of white people played a significant part in the freedom of slaves. So when you try to use that, that we're trying to categorize all black people as devils, I'm not one of those people. I don't think white people are devils. I don't believe. I think there's evil in every race. But we have to be realistic to what the history is. I'll give you an example. White man, um, you're at home with your family, your son, your daughter, your wife, and you're at home, and you're having a, you know, you're just enjoying the family. You're not bothering anyone. You haven't bothered anyone, so you're not expecting anyone to bother you. But I come there, and I come there with a, a business agenda, and, I, and you allow me into your home. And once I'm in your home, I pull out uh, a gun, and I hold everybody hostage. I tie you up. I tie your son up. I tie your daughter up. I tie your wife up. I let some other guys in that were with me. 
Now, when a few guys go in the room with your daughter, a few guys go in the room with your wife, a few guys are standing over you and your son, and you hear the cries from what is being done to your wife and daughter. But that's just not, that. it doesn't end there. They don't do that. I, I'm not doing it. I'm going to leave. I'm actually going to take you with me to where I'm from. And I'm actually going to bring you to my home, and I'm going to bring you to my basement, and I'm going to chain you up. Now, would you be, would it be fair to call you a racist because you don't trust me? Now, let's keep in mind, if I let you out and you see people that look like me, how do you know they're not like me? You're not from where I'm from. You don't know anybody. You don't know their history. All you know is that a person that looked like me came over, raped your daughter, killed your son, brought you over here, made you a slave, told you your name was my name. And your hatred for me, could that actually be categorized as racism? I don't consider a lot of black people, there, there are some black people who are very extreme, but you have to understand where this comes from. This has been a deep-seated thing that has been instilled, in, especially in the black man. We have been beaten for so long by this society that it's actually we've turned into reactive, and a lot of us are very angry and destructive because of the anger has overtaken us. Uh, I'm angry, but I'm not a person that uh, believes that I don't allow anger to overtake my actions. But I believe that there is an entity of racist white people in this country that think that they're uh, superior to all races when I don't understand that, when the white man is actually not the wealthiest. He's actually not the smartest. He's actually not the strongest. But I will give you credit for this. The white man has proven to be, throughout history and to this day, the most hateful, the most death-loving. No other race of um, uh, man on earth in history has killed more people than the white man. There is a reason why the world and all ethnic uh, races hate America. And it's not because of our democracy. We actually have a, a we're in debt. We have uh, we have an infighting that that the world actually sees. So it's not any it, only thing great about this country is our weapons, and we hold these big weapons of, over people's head, and we do what we want to do in the world, and we use them. We say, "If you attack us, we'll drop these big weapons." But God is watching. God is faithful, and we can't continue to go around the world and destroy life and destroy land, and continue to think everybody's going to be scared of us. There are people that are building themselves up. China is the perfect example. Uh, we have nuclear weapons, but it's not fair for anyone else to have nuclear weapons. And it's, it, it just seems to me, uh, it seems to me very, very interesting that all the nations that we don't want to have nuclear weapons, as we do, are nations of color. Now, I just want you to think about that. And, uh, I want you to think about the real deception of this country. The real deception of this country is that we have a past, and this country has a past of, of abusing and treating people of color subordinately. Now, whether or not you want to accept that, that's up to you, but you know the reality. And I'm addressing it, and I'm saying it. Black people support Obama because he was changed from the president before that almost ruined this country. And if you think I'm racist because I support Obama, then you actually need to go study the meaning of the word. And you'll find if you study the meaning of the word that you and a lot of your ancestors fit that definition. Once again, I'd like to thank you for sharing my point of view and at least listening to me. I pray that you have some understanding and I ask that you come back because we're going to get back to the Bible. I think this political stuff is fine, but the Bible is the real reason why we want to do this. So I thank you and I hope that you have a blessed day.